Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at the effect of pressure balancing and pressurizing or depressurizing tanks against having a flow. So we're starting off with a similar starting point as what we looked at in the previous video, which is we have our establishing case right here, number one, which is purely a large pump going into this tank. We have a pressure release valve here and a pressure release valve here. The next case, number two, we've actually implemented this little system here where the liquid will continue on in the green track and the gas will be pressurized or depressurized here. Now we found out that this was the optimal setup in one of our previous videos, including our last one. So we're taking a look at this again, where we have two intake, two output, and we have this pressure release valve. The rest of them now are just duplicated this one. In fact, that shouldn't be there. So it's just duplicated what we had previously put. And what we're going now to do, this one can be kind of our establishing case of the best case scenario, if you will. So what we'll do for this one is try to put a bunch of these uh, pressure release valves here and a bunch here. We'll add four and four. So in this case now, the things should depressurize faster than in that case. And we'll see if that has an effect on what we're trying to do here, if it'll be better or worse. For the next one, number five, what I'm thinking of doing, to be honest, is rather than having a system that ha lets any of the air leave, in this case, we're actually going to allow it to transfer within each other. So you can actually have a sharing of the air between these two tanks rather than even leaving the system. In tank number six, what we're going to do is something that people were saying should be tried, and that is to actually feed this pressure back into that main tank. So anything that may have left in the pump will actually get fed back into this tank. And last but not least, what we're gonna try is a similar situation, except in this case, rather than um, only having that feeding, you're also going to have um, a pressure release valve. So it's gonna be depressurizing this one as well as sharing this back to there. So we'll start off with these tests. Now, before I begin, I just wanna mention that there are hundreds or thousands of different variables that can be tested in this game and little minute details will change big things. So my task is not to necessarily find the best ever solution. It's just to gain a bit of an understanding of kind of the mechanics of the game. Now that said, in the previous video, we found something interesting out, and that is that the small pump actually was able to pump faster. Two small pumps were able to pump faster than one single large pump. Um, that's something worth looking into. However, there were comments and people saying that they changed it after the space and that it was changed so the small pump can only pump up to a pressure of 10 atmospheres where the large one can go to 60. So we'll have to look at that in another video, but I just wanted to let you know that I am considering that. Now, here we are running the tests. You could see the water or gas, I believe diesel is flowing. And if we take a snippet of the numbers, just to get a feel for the flow rate that you see on these displays here. We have our previous, what we call the best case, which is number three, doing 277. The ones before that, the one without anything and the one with the single system, doing 233 and 236 respectfully. Now the one that has a bunch of different pressure release valves is actually getting worse than number three. So the one that has number f four of these um, valves is getting worse than number three. The one here, five, is getting identical 
flow rate to number three. So where we are previously here pumping this out, on this one we have the tanks sharing. Now in the long run, I don't know if that's going to be sustainable, but maybe it is. Maybe as the liquid leaves this one, the gas will replenish it. Now number six over there is getting the highest number, 324. And that is one that has the system feeding back into the tank. And then the last one, number seven, is still getting higher than our previous best case at 311. And that is having the pressure release valve in the tank as well as recycling. Now one thing I didn't test is removing this guy here and just having this go to there. But I do think that as we fill up that bottom tank, it's vital to have this because without it, eventually you'll end up filling this tank up and then the air is gonna be so compressed that you're not gonna be able to fill things in anymore. So I think this is quite important. Now that is looking only at these numbers and you can see they kind of drop. So not really understanding exactly where all these values are coming from, especially because it's something so new and why they're dropping as it goes, you'd think that the pumps would stay consistent. But if we stop the system and take a look, we're at 5,000 on the one without any relief valves, except for the ones in the tank. And we're at just under 5,000, okay. So close, but actually that one is better. Now here we're at 5,800. So we previously established that that was the best one that would have just the uh, dual intake and dual output. Number four, okay. Now we're talking, we're getting not better than our best case, but we're getting better than the one without anything. We're getting 500, 5,500. Okay, here we did nothing. Okay, so keep in mind, in this case here, five, we actually didn't transfer anything. Okay, maybe I didn't turn the pump on, though it was working. And then we have 6,000 over here and just under 6,000 here. So, wow. Yeah, I mean, it got slightly better than our previous number three best case. I do wonder if it is sustainable, especially considering this one is putting the missing air back in, but it's not replenishing it. This one at least is replenishing it back to atmosphere. So in the long run, if we keep this up, you could see that the pressure, which is the top one here, is slightly higher in this one and it's dropping as we go. Um, but we have the bottom numbers which are close to matching not quite matching. This one's still at one. The one that has the most of these would be the closest to one, I presume. So it's 1.12, whereas this is 1.19, 1.26 in there. So that's the slowest to leave. So there's a lot of different factors at play here, but just from a very basic standpoint, it seems that recycling these um recycling the air back into the system works the best again not quite sure for the long run of it but i would say that maybe this is the way i would do it then rather than what we did in number three you put that air back in if i stop it take another snapshot here or snapshot we're at 9200 there and here we're at 8700 so that is doing better now we're at 9,500 here. Again, just so curious what happens to that air pressure in the long run for that tank. But we are almost at a thousand more just by doing what we did here by putting that air to kind of recycle. I guess one test that I want to do now is to compare these two systems with simply having the small pump configuration because we know the small pump can or the regular pump can easily be placed and mounted 
like this. We don't have to have, you know, this kind of four or two by two configuration, two by two by two. You could just place it very simply as such. So let's try putting four pumps like this and depositing it right here. Now, do we want to put a relief valve? You know, probably just uh, so we don't end up with systems that are over pressured. But one thing that I will do is just again for simplicity is rather than, you know, doing something like this, let's just try to put it right here. So we'll just put the valve right there and there, just like this. And we'll put two over there as well. Actually, to keep it consistent, let's put one just so it's matching the test that we have over here. These ones have one. So we're just going to put one of these in each like that. Now, what other test did we know wasn't as good? This one. Okay. So let also remove that test and run this exact same test with all this stuff over here with the exception of one thing here we are not going to um, have it be plain and simple we're going to actually put the pressure release valve as we had it or actually better yet why don't we put it feeding back into the main tank in theory that would be the best system right because we determined in test number seven over there that feeding the pressure back into this will actually result in the best um, pumping speed. So let's just set this up like that. So there you have it. Now it's feeding back into the main tank. What I don't like is the complexity of this. I prefer this one. So if anything, if this test number five is better than this test here, then I'd say that we're better off still using this even than this if it's marginally better just because it is a little bit more complex. So I'm going to go ahead and plug these in and we'll start it up. So with that, now you can see that the water is flowing. Five and four here should be the fastest because it's the most number of pumps. You can see that the value is less and we know that it is reduced uh, when you have multiple pumps in one bay but regardless okay we're gonna stop the test here in a second okay 4400 4400 5000 okay in our what we call the base best case 5100 okay wow 9000 and 9100 with compared to this one here we're at 53 and 53 so those which we considered to be the new best cases which feeds the air back into that pressure into that tank these two are pretty much doubling it unbelievable look at that so i would still well actually number five is getting a higher number even than this one with all of its relief valves so i would say that this is the epic winner of all of them right here i'm gonna go ahead and make this golden so our what we call is our best case scenario here that i previously established now we've concluded that these are in fact better this one is slightly better but i just like to have my tank relief um release the pressure after a long time the reason for that is if it's fully drained you want to fill something into it you don't want to have it pressurized so it's got to go somewhere uh, of course you could put a little valve here if you want and then you could control it and you can have the best of both worlds but for that case i would say that i would rank this one slightly better than this one just for the ease and for the fact it will not pressurize but doesn't matter 
this blew it out of the water. This is pretty much double in speed in what we've transferred. So that actually goes to show that in a creation like this, rather than, you know, in here having this single large pump set up, I'm better off just putting four of them and going at her. And that would pretty much result in a faster transfer. Now it is a little different because here we only have one single point of transfer for the fluid. So maybe we are maxing out the capacity of this one node to transfer it. Whereas previously we had four actual intake valves or intake fluid ports transferring it. So maybe the capacity of this is limited to one, which we're going to have to see in another video. So thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for the next test for more videos, for more creations and all kinds of good stuff. Thank you for watching and happy storm mixing everyone. See you next time.